Viewers like you make this program possible. Support your local PBS station. Coming up, Chef David Chang visits Spain and its heavy influence on his career. San Sebastian is one of the eating capitals of the world. The cider house is sort of awesome. Eats pinchos with Chef Juan Marie Arzac. The first, the old is this. The first pincho that was ever created? Visits Chef Anduri Aduriz. Is this edible? No way. <laughs> cooks a microwave sponge cake. The microwave is highly underrated as a cooking vessel. It's pretty rad. Fideos and a salt cod omelet. Enter the mind of a chef. glorious Spain. It is to many a culinary paradise, a delicious melting pot comprised of amazing ingredients and techniques. San Sebastian is the hub for modern Spanish cooking. We have this entire wealth of culinary knowledge there, so it's an important region to represent. The culinary tradition here is a window into Spain's history. The Moors introduced Spain to a slew of ingredients that have become staples of Spanish cuisine, including many spices, rice, citrus fruits like lemon and oranges, and of course, gazpacho. The Greeks introduced olive oil. And from the new world of the Americas, tomatoes, potatoes, vanilla, and chocolate. So it's no surprise that with its rich culinary history, Spain is where one finds many of the world's best chefs working in some of the best kitchens in the world. And where Dave Chang finds inspiration from some of his most revered idols. <laughs> San Sebastian is an amazing place to visit, to explore on its own. But for me, when I go to San Sebastian, part of the gastronomic experience is the Juan Marie experience. Arguably, Juan Marie Arzac is one of the most important figures in the Western culinary world because he helped modernize Spanish cuisine from its sort of prehistoric days. He elevated Spanish cooking. He was one of a handful of figures that made it happen. <laughs> I had the fortunate luck to go on a pincho store with Juan Marie Arzac, his daughter Elena Arzac, and our translator extraordinaire, Maite. Last time we drank all day. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I'm the one that has to get ready to hang out with you. <laughs> <laughs> Pinchos are the San Sebastian take on tapas, which just about everyone eats all the time, all day long. It's like purgatory sometimes. The first, the old is this. He's gonna give us like the first. The first pincho that was ever created? That was ever created. The first pincho is it's called Hilda. His philosophy. He's always looked at food with the child's eye. <laughs> and that to me means always questioning, always asking why, always trying to improve. It's a mommy. It's a mommy. No? Yeah. Oh. This is no mommy. No? It's just it's just delicious. No mommy. <laughs> Not umami. Umami? Oh, mommy, oh, mommy, mommy blue, oh, mommy blue. <laughs> bueno, vamos a ver. Ah, para mí un segundo. Que a mí me, gust eh, me gustaba mucho. Uh, but he, he liked her very much. Cuando era joven, when they were younger. Desde hace. So now she likes her too, but she's married. She, there's nothing he can do. He's got Benjamin Button of the mind. It's like slowly getting younger. <laughs> Even though his body's getting older, his mind is getting younger, and the dude is the most beloved person in San Sebastian. I want to know why you don't run for mayor of San Sebastian. I am anarchist. Anarchist. He's, he's an anarchist. 
The next egg dish that was very profound to me as a kid growing up, and I think that was an iconic egg dish in Europe, was created by Juan Marie Arzac and his daughter Elena Arzac. If I recall correctly, I was a kid watching PBS, and I would run home and watch a great PBS show, Great Chess of the West, Great Chess of New England, and the best ones are Great Chess of Europe. And I remember watching this, and I was like, oh man, that's so cool, like this egg. And I can't believe right now I'm recreating this. It was a different way of cooking an egg. And how they presented it, I don't remember, but it was a technique that I thought was so cool. And it was really simple. It was basically putting eggs in cling film. And that's what we have here. And we have it with string. The only reason we have string attached to it is this. The water is about 185 degrees. The idea, again, is you don't want these eggs to be touching the bottom. Cook it at a gentle pace. You could easily cook it in a water bath, but this is how I remember seeing it. And chill it down, and this is what we have. In a way, it sort of looks like a ball of mozzarella. So it's just an egg, just repackaged. But as you can see, it's, it looks like burrata cheese almost. Of the tech. So what we're going to do here is try to recreate one of my favorite things in the world I've ever eaten. Juan Marie's friend, the chef owner proprietor at Rodexio. What she's known for and what Juan Marie goes there to eat is her omelet. And when you see Juan Marie eat it, it's like. Oh, he's being transported to his childhood. <laughs> it's one of those magical moments, magical dishes that just does it. First thing is that salt cod, it's everywhere in Spain. This is fresh cod. You can actually make your own salt cod. Take fresh cod and you pack it in salt. That's it. They're not joking when they say salt cod. The salt. It'll also extract all the moisture. And what you'll get is this gnarly brick. And what you do is when it gets to that point, you reconstitute it either in water and you change that water out, and then you put it in milk, sort of makes it more edible because it's obviously incredibly salty. So that's what we have here. It's now edible. So I'm gonna add about six eggs. some of the salt cod, tear up some parsley, a generous helping of onions cooked in olive oil and a little bit of butter. What she definitely did not use was chopsticks to make this, but I'm sorry, it's a better way. Olive oil. Well, the great thing I liked about this omelet was the buildup. You know, everyone's experienced this. Like, oh, this place is great. You have to try it. And it gets talked about, and you're like, there's no way it can live up to the expectations, and the weight of everyone telling you it's the greatest omelet in the world. And then you, you chased it, and you're like, it is that awesome. That was the omelet. And it was served like that, but as you can see, underneath, it's still pretty creamy. I actually like my omelets that way, that this is as simple as you can get, and the only thing gonna be very tasty. And now a word from Chef Ferran Adria. I think that what people who lived there, not that they came from Bulli, 94, 95, 96, were the people who were living there, really, the transformation de la cocina y, y lo que eh, iba a ser un nuevo lenguaje, ¿no? Yo creo que... Y además era una época que venía gente aquí y de verdad que no le gustaba, no le gustaba nada. Y había gente que se emocionaba y que estaba viendo que, que estaba delante de algo mm, importante. So San Sebastián es uno de los eating capitals del mundo partly because of this guy named Louis Anthony Adderiz, and he's the chef at Muguritz, which has been around for over a decade. Anthony Adderiz, 
protege of both chefs Adria and Arzac, he carries the torch of Spain's innovative chefs to new terrain. The genesis of so many modern culinary techniques came out of this kitchen. The meal here is a lot of fun. It's, it's like pure joy. <laughs> One of the things with Anthony and what I love most about Anthony is his creativity. He has such a cerebral approach with food, yet combines it with nature. It's extraordinarily difficult, and it's not what you seem. It's not what you think it is. It just transforms into this insane experience. He spent two years researching the egg and everything about the egg. And he was one of the first people to sort of break it down. And out of his research of the egg, he created the slow poached egg in terms of cooking it in the shell at a constant temperature. It's like, uh, more or less, after 64 degrees, it started to like coagulate. It cooks at two different times, egg yolk and the egg yeah. white. They said he studied like the egg white, uh, like what is the composition? They knew it was a pr protein with a lot of water, but he needed to know like what kind of protein. So there's 13 different proteins. After years of research, Anthony discovered that the egg white and the egg yolk cook at two different temperatures. The egg yolk cooks at 62. Celsius, the egg white cooks, I believe, at 61 Celsius. Their goal was to protect the egg yolk. So after Anthony was just kind enough to explain to us how he came about slow poaching the egg, he really then just melted my mind when he showed me the faux egg. After the idea of the slow, the slow so cooked uh, egg, they said, we want to make an egg that you would eat everything. Is this edible? No way. <laughs> That's amazing. My mind just melted. <laughs> Anthony is the first person that I know of to literally recreate the shape, feel, and exact weight of an eggshell. He's able to cast an eggshell and fill it with an egg cream, which is insane. Just I, drop it? Yeah, I like it. That's how they present it. They take it to the table and they drop it. I'm so mad at him. <laughs> he said, thank you for being so generous. No way. He's the man. And doesn't even let me call him chef. It's only Anthony. That's the beautiful thing about Anthony is he's created this egg now. You can create and cast anything. You could literally put a chicken in there and cook it. You could fill it with a baby bird. It's a perfect marriage of science, of innovation, but also how you execute it in making it taste delicious. So we're gonna make a slow poached egg. Andoni made the egg as well. He created it in 1999. Andoni studied the egg, and the idea really was, how do you understand the egg, that the egg yolk and the egg white cook at two different temperatures? And then when you cook it within the shell, that it cooks in itself, so it poaches in the shell. The best way to get this to work is in a water circulator. The beauty of it is the simplicity of it. You don't have to do anything other than cook it at the temperature. So what I like to do is cook it at 60 Celsius. So the egg yolk and the egg white are sort of not the same consistency, but I like my egg yolk uh, more runny. And it takes about 30 minutes, depending on the water volume. One way you can cook this at home, if you don't have a water circulator, is in a large water bath. What we've done is took one bowl, put another bowl in, place it in here. The only reason we have this get up is so the eggs aren't sitting on the bottom. It's really important that if you cook it this manner, the eggs are separated from the bottom of the heat source. And what's also important is that you keep it in that 60, 63 Celsius uh, range. What we have here are eggs that have been cooked for an hour at 60 Celsius. After the eggs are cooked, if you chill them down, they hold their shape a lot better. I like putting in soup, and I like having it at um, this viscosity, the 60 Celsius, because it gives it that inexpensive luxury. And now another word from Ferran. Nosotros no creábamos platos, creábamos elaboraciones para crear muchos platos. 
esta fue la diferencia. La gente creaba platos. Nosotros decimos, no, no, nosotros vamos a crear elaboraciones y a partir de estas elaboraciones se podrán crear muchos platos. Y esto sí que es un cambio de paradigma, ¿no? Innovation and tradition share the stage in the culinary world of Spain. A humble dish like paella can be found alongside a deconstruction of the potato dish. In Spain, innovation respects tradition, and tradition does not fear innovation. Now we're going to make the very famous Spanish dish, fideos, and offend them. You know, I actually do love fideos because it's not made with rice, it's made with noodles, and it has this really cool texture. But instead of using noodles, we're going to use instant ramen. And that sounds so ridiculous, but it actually does make something delicious. So, start off with some olive oil in a ripping hot pan. Some chorizo. Chorizo is delicious. We have some clean little neck clams. We're adding the clams first because they take the longest to cook. Some Bouchot mussels from Maine. This one, you know, you could probably find in Sandra Lee's cookbook. Excuse me, Mrs. Cuomo. She's gonna kill me. And some crushed ramen noodles. Uh, we're gonna pour in hot chicken stock to this dish. So once the shellfish has opened up, you're pretty much ready to plate. Well, why don't we just serve it like this, huh? Garnish with some pimentón. We're gonna top it with a garlic aioli, which is basically mayonnaise, lemon, olive oil, and pulverized garlic. So, an homage to paella via fideos via instant ramen. Very New York. We're here with Dan Burns. Uh, we're gonna make probably one of the best dishes, ideas, techniques I've ever seen, and it's directly from Albert Adria, a landmark foam. And it's not even a foam, it's a microwavable sponge cake. That's done wrong a lot. Everything you're supposed to do wrong, made right. Albert Adria is one of the greatest chefs alive. He was also the creative director for Foran uh, and El Bui. He's like the CIA. You're never gonna know how much Albert has influenced uh, food. So Albert showed us this insanely delicious dish. This is our interpretation of a strawberry shortcake. Nobody was using whipped cream canisters to make food as a technique. It was a brilliant it's, way to make a sponge cake. It's a brilliant way to make a lot of foams, creams, everything. This is yolks, whites, uh, flour. We put almond nuts and some of the fat. We chose olive oil. So basically, we're just trying to mimic strawberry shortcake. So it was super simple. Cup this size, quite important. And then with the Dixie cup, cut three small slits in each side, just so that when it goes in the microwave, it has some place for steam to escape all the way around. So you fill it about one third of the way up, and then just simply put it in the microwave. And might I add, the microwave is highly underrated as a cooking vessel. It's pretty rad. You can see the air bubbles have formed. It's fully set. So 25 seconds, you just made a cake. And all we do is take the palette knife to lightly loosen it from the sides. The beautiful thing about this is you can break it apart. And it looks so irregular. So we're just going to dust it with some freeze-dried strawberry powder to enhance the idea of the strawberry shortcake. Some macerated strawberries as well. Just douse the raw strawberries with sugar and then let it hang out in the air. We wanted to do as many things with strawberries as possible. And then we just have a... Uh... So this is an espuma. It's whipped cream, but we've added... Uh, we added mint water. 
So it's highly flavored blanched mint combined with cream. So it's flavored whipped cream. But then this is what this canister was essentially made for, whipped cream. Although very good for whippets, just whipped cream. Usually it's strawberry shortcake, is garnished with mint, but never eaten. And I think that's wrong because mint with strawberries is a very delicious thing. And then we just made some strawberry gastrique. Finished with wood sorrel, also for acidity. And that's our take on strawberry shortcake. It's a burns. <laughs> Tell you me. got something on your face. What, this? <laughs> what? What is it? <laughs> something green, dude. Yeah? Oh. A final word from Chef Adria. Siempre ha sido igual. Si, si quieres hacer cosas nuevas, tienes que tener talento creativo. Y este talento creativo se va a transformar al máximo nivel en nuevas elaboraciones, conceptos, líneas filosóficas. Y esto es un poco lo que, lo que hemos intentado hacer el bully y la cocina de vanguardia actual. Es decir, no solo el bully. Es verdad que el bully, yo creo que hoy sí que se puede decir que, 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 que ha influenciado y está, y está influenciado a muchos cocineros en este espíritu, no tanto en los platos, en este espíritu. The influence of Spain on Chang's cooking may not be apparent on the surface, but it's there. Juan Marie Arzac, for me, is the epitome of how you age gracefully. I wish I could be as patient as he is. You get to eat like this anywhere. His wants and desires are all located in San Sebastian. Sometimes, like, when he finishes work at the restaurant, he comes by himself. He said, just give me an omelet, and he has an omelet. He is so loving, he's so gracious, and he just loves life. Momo, fuku. Momo, momo, dear momo. He's just happy, happy all the time. And even when he's unhappy, it's usually unhappy because there's not enough food or not enough drink. And he's got it all. So good. I'm never going to be Hugh Hefner. I'm never going to be as rich as Bill Gates. I can only be <laughs> like Juan Marie.